So thank you guys. If you didn't get a chance, um, I, uh, I apologize, but you will have a chance to stay connected through the chat box um, and watch along with Audrey as we go. And if you have any questions, we will be able to ask, uh, you will be able to ask them, we will answer them. So for our small group here, we will have times to ask questions to Audrey and discuss what we are seeing, but please, like as I mentioned, keep your lines muted until then. Uh, feel free to use the chat box or raise your hand if you have something to say. I will be sharing with Audrey any questions that come up through the chat box. We have a few other people from G Adventures here that will also be able to help answer some of these questions as they come up. Um, and if you are part of one of our panelists and if you do have a question, uh, you can ask it in the chat box or raise your hand and you will have time to unmute your line and actually ask it to Audrey directly. Uh, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the uh, journey through Costa Rica with Audrey. Audrey, take it away. Yay! How's everybody doing? You guys ready? Yep. Well, woo! Let's just start this tour, guys. And if you are down for dancing, you can do it. Give me some mayo, rice and beans. Give me some mayo, rice and beans. Woo! I know you know this song. Rice and beans. Woo! Rice and beans. <laughs> Excellent, guys. Welcome, welcome to Costa Rica. How are you doing? It's a pleasure for me to show you home, uh, to show you a little bit of Costa Rica and share this amazing experience. Of course, we're gonna have a lot of fun and we are definitely gonna start right now as my friends starting sets, right? So how's everybody doing? Pura Vida, yay! <laughs> I'm assuming everybody scream Pura Vida for sure. For those that doesn't know, well, Pura Vida is our Costa Rican slang. And basically is the way that we express life, that we express, you know, our lifestyle and everything it goes. So Pura Vida, if we translate it, will mean pure life, right? But again, as I was saying, this is gonna be our lifestyle. So for us, it's something like beautiful, like representates, as we said, 80% of our language in Costa Rica and Spanish, Espanol. <laughs> so in this case, how we're gonna be using it, let me give you an example. Sterling, how are you doing? Pura vida, right? How's your food? Pura vida. Hey, how's your family? Pura vida. And everything is pura vida, right? So this is a beautiful slang that we have around here. And I invite you all to use it. And of course, whenever, you know, we're here down in Costa Rica and you wanna see Costa Ricans smile, just use it, go pura vida, my. <laughs> And you're going to be receiving quite a lot of smiles from people around. Um, I'm very, very happy to show you this Costa Rica quest. It's going to be an amazing adventure. We are going to be going through different spots in Costa Rica. And I'm showing you right now how, how our map looks like, right? And also to show you a little bit of Costa Rica as the route that we're going to be taking. But before we start, uh, let me tell you something about myself because otherwise it will be the random person talking, right? So as he said, my name is Adriana, Adriana Chavez. This is me pronouncing fully Latina, Adriana, <laughs> or Adriana. So I've been working with G Adventures since 2012. I've been proudly, probably the best moments of my life. And I'm here like super excited to give you a little bit of Costa Rica through your screens. Um, again, as my friend said, any questions that you have, please feel free to do it. This is what I'm here for, to help you with absolutely everything. All right, so you see guys that we have the map over here. Me and my crazy imagination, I always said that our Costa Rica map looks like a jumping bull, right? I don't know if you get to see like the leg of the jumping bull. Well, this is an, our, our country, our beautiful piece of heaven. So right now, the idea will be basically for us to start our journey over here in San Jose, then we are going to be moving to La Fortuna, but through the mountains, you know, going around the Apoas volcano, getting into La Fortuna. Then we're going to go up into the Monte Verde area, the cloud forest, and then we're going to enjoy some beach time down in Manuel Antonio. So this is going to be the places that we are going to be visiting. And basically, we're going to be spending two nights in each location, okay? So my goal right now is to show you what we can do, how we can get fun in these places, some activities, recommended places to eat, because of course, guys, if you ask me, everything is about food, right? That's when the memories comes, like, oh, I remember that place. It was delicious, the food. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> All right. So... Something very that, uh, that I want to start right now, well, definitely that we are here in San Jose. 
San Jose, as, as you will right here, we're starting in La Parque de la Sabana, can you see? And I locate us over here, guys, because I really want us to get all set, comfortable shoes, ready to walk and explore this amazing city. So San Jose, uh, it has a beautiful definitions and different artists and different kind of architectures that we can enjoy. So let's just talk up a little bit about this Parque de la Sabana first. So here in Parque de la Sabana is where, let me just move this over here. So this is where we can get, you know, a lot of, of the view of our sporting life, or say it that way. We have our, our, um, stadium over here our national stadium and people normally can jog so if you're around san jose and you have some spare time and you want to just exercise and do something you know different you can come over here you know just walk around and from here we're going to be heading to san jose downtown so San Jose, well, basically what we're going to be doing after La Sabana, we are going to cover Paseo Colón to get to the pedestrian Avenida Central. So basically is what we're seeing right here. And I do want you guys to also, when we get into Avenida Central, to just get walking slowly. Please take your time, guys. As I was telling you, this is what happens. San Jose is a mixture of architecture. Remember, this is a developing city, right? So a lot of the architecture that we remain from 1900s at the end, beginnings of this 20th century, is being remodelated. So now there are buildings that you can just, you know, like pick from here and there to just admire this beautiful architecture. But once we get a little bit more into this pedestrian way, what we're going to be doing is get to see the Mercado Central. And my point over here is that I wanted to take you guys all the way from the Mercado Central all the way to the end of this pedestrian way that finishes with our National Museum. So that's what we're going to be doing here in San Jose. Now, the Mercado Central, guys, is probably the most folkloric place in whole San Jose and definitely a highlight. I highly recommend you to just stop over there for a couple things and I'm going to explain you how we're going to be doing this. Inside of the, the central market, we're going to be able to find not only market stuff, you know, but in here, in, in this one, we can find souvenirs. We have candles and herbs and food and out of meat and vegetables and everything you can imagine in just one place. It's actually like a maze, guys. You start in one place and when you find out, you end up like pretty much on the other side of the city. And it's absolutely beautiful because you can surround yourself with music, with flavors, with everything. And I always encourage people to do that, right? When we travel, we want to experience a culture, but that experience cannot be only like, oh yeah, I say check that place, right? What we want to do is that, you know, is smell the culture, taste the culture, embrace the culture, dance the culture, right? So as we did at the beginning, all right? <laughs> I know that everybody dance. So definitely, this is a place that you want to stop and give it a little try, right? To the local ice cream, they have ice cream, they have empanadas, guys. I know you know what is empanada, but have you heard about our Costa Rican empanadas? <laughs> Tell you more in a second. Let just give me a minute. But definitely, guys, Mercado Central, a highlight. Just write it down over there because you must come over here. All right. So we are gonna keep walking over the pedestrian uh, way, and my intention is make also one of the stops the J Museum. This building that we are seeing right now, the J Museum, it's an amazing, amazing building because uh, besides being very modern is one of those museums that let you interact, right? You can, you know, play here and touch here and get to see more interaction with what is inside of this Jade Museum. Not only Jade is going to be over here, guys. This is a be the best place to have a better perception of our roots in Costa Rica, our, our native people. So I am going to ask you to please also make this place one of those mandatory stuffs. I'm showing you a little bit of the inside as well, so you'll be able to see how cool it is, right? Because the place is very cool, and you just get to see uh, all these amazing pieces and art and explanations deeply about our roots and our ancestors of Costa Rica. This place, it's so, so nice that actually you can do it by yourself. It's a very... Uh, self and user friendly so you can just go and have the experience by yourself take your time in each station and enjoy the maximum and get to learn a lot right because it's very important to get to see where the ticos come from where the ticos right you guys know that we got named ticos right i am a tica <laughs> all right guys costa ricans are named ticos just to you to know <laughs> all right so this is my intention so we get to see all these places 
places. And I'm showing you here a little bit how the Avenida Central looks like. It's very alive, guys. People sell stuff, people walk around, people play music, people come and walk with you. It's like, hey, hola. Especially that San Jose is not, you know, like our focus of tourism. So you might feel once in here, especially if you have, you know, some, you know, like light color of eyes and hair. So you people, you're might gonna see like, hmm, you're not from around here and probably people is gonna be, you know, trying to talk to you. And so, and this is why I'm asking you to enjoy yourself, to just, you know, get embraced all this part of San Jose and keep walking all the way. But on the way, you're gonna be finding amazing places like this one that we're seeing right now. What a beautiful building, right? This is absolutely beautiful. This is our national theater, guys. What we call our coffee building, for say that way. But this is actually a very proper name because it was basically built on coffee, right? It's not made of coffee, okay? <laughs> Doesn't smell like coffee as people think. <laughs> But in this case, this amazing building is a great representation of how was the status of the economical status of Costa Rica back then. This place uh, was open to the public in 1897, if I'm not wrong. Now, actually, it's 1987 in October the 31st. Imagine we're going to be soon celebrating an anniversary of this beautiful building. It's the most exquisite building that we probably have, not only in San Jose, but probably in Costa Rica. I definitely encourage you to go take a little moment to get inside if you would like to have a deeper tour to get to see where the opera and the salons and everything are. Like, definitely, please go ahead. But if you just want to take a look just of the outsides, you're more than welcome always to go. By the way, guys, inside there is a little cafe, so you can also have a little cafe and enjoy, you know, a building basically made out of coffee huh? <laughs> amazing right so this is one of the places that i really want you guys to enjoy while you are gonna be in san jose and while we are gonna keep walking through the pedestrian way of course because we have comfortable shoes and we can walk all over we are gonna be finding basically right behind the museum the jade museum we are gonna be finding this amazing jewelry that we have over here, right? That if we are seeing it, it looks like a fortress, right? This is our national museum. This is amazing, beautiful place and which has a lot of historical value for us. The National Museum was built in 1917, right? And originally was uh, built as a, for the military barracks, right? And actually, if we go around and we walk around outside of the of the building, we are gonna be able to see holes of the bullets that was from the 1948 civil war that we had in Costa Rica. Right after, maybe two years after that civil war in 1948, in 1950, it was declared a museum. What we can find in this museum, you wonder, if we just saw, you know, a little bit of a museum back there. Well, in here, we're going to be finding a lot of elements about the war, about Costa Rica per se, our culture, more information about our, our roots, our, our native people, and more and more. So these places are going to give us a very good, you know, like intro to Costa Rica. And if you have this spare time to just, uh, just to get embraced and acclimatized with the Pura Vida style and who, what Costa Ricans we are, right? How cool is that? Great, right? We guys have any questions so far? No? Yes, <laughs> um, guys, just as a reminder to um, all of our, our panelists and attendees that if you are sending a message, make sure you just uh, before you send it, just click to all panelists and attendees right before you send. That way we're able to engage with the entire community. Um, but uh, with nothing else, I will pass it back to you, Audrey. Yes, so, muy bien. Very good. <laughs> See, we're learning the Spanish as well. All right, so now let's talk about something very important. And I told you this is for me the most important thing because we are going to be talking about it the whole way, guys. There's things that I love in life and it's going to be, well, definitely my family. <laughs> food, birds, and travel. <laughs> In that order, guys. So what I'm going to talk to you about right now, and I, I almost can see there are people right now like yum, 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 right? Craving what is going on over here. So we're going to be talking about Costa Rican food. 
what we're going to be, you know, eating around these days that we're going to be in Costa Rica. Yes, probably you're saying, Adri, we're going to be eating rice and beans, right? <laughs> and that's why I started with that song. Give me some of your rice and beans to give you a proper intro to what we're going to be enjoying. Normally, guys, and this is how I like to do it, I normally encourage people to embrace our cuisine. I know it's mostly rice and beans, and it sounds like a joke, but it's not. We are serious with our, our rice and beans. But let's embrace it. Let's embrace these places, San Jose, La Fortuna, Monteverde, with all these deliciousness meals that we have in Costa Rica. And then we can just explore the sea, you know, the seafood deliciousness once we are at the beach. That's normally, you know, like how I like to do it. So we have the best of all the worlds, right? So what we have here in the picture, guys, is our Costa Rican traditional casado. Exactly, guys. So a Costa Rican casado, or the word casado, means, means being married. In history, it says, right, that it comes from the fact that our farmers back in the days when they used to leave the houses when a guy was married and to go farming or whatever you know when gets the lunch time he was having something like this the rice the beans picadillo protein a salad plantains everything you can imagine a full meal to resist the whole day of work and hard labor and so and well single ones bro for only just rice and beans right but this is a traditional costa rican casado and now, casados, we're going to be having it normally for lunch and dinner. That's normally, you know, like what we consume. And you're going to say, yeah, you actually like casados. But for us, it's different every time. And believe me, I can tell you with all the honesty, as a Costa Rican, rice and beans tastes different in lunch and tastes different at dinner. <laughs> they do, they do. <laughs> All right, so let me talk to you a little bit more. Remember we spoke about empanadas? Well, empanadas in Costa Rica are something delicious because they are a little bit deep fried. So definitely they are absolutely delicious. And besides that, the empanadas are gonna be able to be filled with absolutely anything. You are vegetarian. Well, we fill the empanadas with vegetables if you like so. You like the rice and beans? Well, we can get some pinto inside of the rice of the empanadas, more rice and beans inside of the empanadas. So these are the kind of things that I'm gonna be encouraging you. But this over here, guys, I said, let me just take a moment because this is definitely one of my favorite meals in Costa Rica. It smells like Christmas already over here, guys. This is our traditional meal of, in Christmas. This is our Costa Rican traditional tamales. Now, you're seeing like a wrap, like a paper, like a leaf over there. Yes, it is a leaf. It's banana leaves. So what we do over here, we take the corn dough, very spiced, very delicious, very well cooked. We are going to be adding some rice, duh, of course, <laughs> some vegetables as well. And in this case, that our tradition, it comes with pork. Our Christmas Definitely tradition is going to be, you know, and share with our family a whole pig that is consumed during the whole month of December. Now, as a personal note, guys, this is exactly what I consume every single day since the 1st of December to the 31st, because this is the most delicious tradition that we have. Now, if you ask Costa Rica, do you guys have tamales on a regular basis? Well, yeah, you might, we might find tamales around here and there, and probably around the road we can find it. But for us, that's a little loco. <laughs> you consume the tamales at Christmas. <laughs> they taste way better. <laughs> All right. So I really hope that whenever you come over here, Costa Rica, we're having tamales and we can share a tamal over here. Now, something else that I like to share is desserts, guys. Desserts in Costa Rica are something very traditional. And what I'm showing you right now, it's our traditional miel de ayote. And our traditional miel de ayote, it's something very delicious, but absolutely sweet, right? So how we do this is with pumpkin, kind of like a, like a, yeah, like a pumpkin, actually. It is like we cut it in pieces. We start to slow cook it with sugar cane molasses. We call it tapa de dulce. And I'll tell you a little bit more in a second. So we start to cook it with cloves and cinnamon and more. And it start to just basically melt and get, you know, inside of the pumpkin. And my mouth already melt. <laughs> So, and it's absolutely something delicious to try and something sweet if you're looking to try something very traditional. Now, can you notice that there is also a banana leaf over there? 
We like to do this a lot. This increases the flavor. And I actually asked personally my grandma why we keep doing this. And she keeps saying like that. When you wrap it around, it just consumes the flavor inside and increase that traditional Costa Rican cuisine flavor in every single ingredient. So definitely something that we have to try, guys. Definitely. If you come, I'll, I'll, I'll cook one. I'll cook one. Why not, right? <laughs> now, guys, this is the part that on my mouth is going to be melt. So probably you're going to see see me doing this now here and then <laughs> because this is absolutely delicious this is actually what my mom cooks for me on my birthday uh this is what we call olla de carne kind of like a beef stew so it's a big bowl big 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 chunks of vegetables it can be potatoes carrots um, yams yoka plantains all these vegetables tropical that we have over here and produce over here in costa rica plus beef and rice, of course, right? Rice is, is a must for us. If we, we, you were wondering if it will be good, good with beans. Never try it. I'll let you know one day if I, if I decide to try with beans, how it goes. But this is olla de carne. And now I put it over here because I also wanted to give you alternative, right? Because people sometimes ask me, Adri, come on, really? Only rice and beans? Well, look at this. Look at this. We have empanadas. We have olla de carne. We also have pinto. <laughs> Now guys, this is our traditional breakfast meal. This is gallo pinto. So it's mixed rice and beans. And normally, as traditionally goes, you're normally are gonna do your pinto with the leftovers of your lunch and dinner of the prior day, right? So what you're gonna be doing, just mix these rice and beans with the spices, onions, celery, garlic, cilantro. We love cilantro, guys. And this is something very important. Cilantro is a, a herb that we use very often in all our cuisine. So if you don't like it, you probably this moment are like with this face, please, if you come down to Costa Rica, let us know. So we are always on top of these little details to just make that experience bigger and better. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at this. This is a pecadillo. And I post this picture over here because I proudly cook at that. So it's something very delicious. This is a chopped picadillo of water squash or chayote, as we call it. And I add some corn over here because this is very, very traditional as well. Picadillos is like our vegetarian meal for say that way but people like me sometimes we include some meat over there just to make it you know a little bit <laughs> guilty <laughs> but definitely one of the things that we have to try sometimes in the casaditos or the little casados or the our traditional meals you are gonna be finding also a little bit of example of what um a picadillo is like in the first picture now guys let me just explain you something now that we're talking about Along the way, and as we move forward into the towns, we're gonna be having options, all kinds of options to eat, right? And as I always said, and I have been telling you guys, food, it's the, one of the best memories that we can keep from a place, right? And this is kind of what it hook us to a place. So for me, this is very important for you guys to enjoy the maximum those cuisine experiences. In Costa Rica, we're able to have two different experiences. We can go to restaurants, like any restaurant that you know, we've been all over, right? But also, we can enjoy the amazing flavor of local sodas, soditas, as I call it, S-O-D-A-S, <laughs> or S-O-D-A. So sodas doesn't mean like a drinking soda. In this case, soda is a, like a, our local diner, where you're going to be finding the menu, more than 95% of the menu is rice and beans. I know, but... <laughs> But definitely you will have an amazing tryout of all the rest of different ingredients that we have in Costa Rica. And you have an amazing price as well for delicious, authentic Costa Rican food. So I'm allowing myself right now to, as we move forward, to recommend you a couple solitas in each town. So you can just, you know, write down those places. And please, whenever you come down here, just make sure that you give it a try because they are delicious. So are you guys ready to continue? Yes? Let's go! I'm super excited to show you the rest of the country. So right now, guys, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be taking our van and we are going to be driving for about a total amount, like it could be maybe like a three hours, but we're going to be doing quite a couple technical stops. So this day, it could be actually a little longer because first of all, uh, after an hour and a half, two hours, we're going to be stopping first in La Catarata, La Paz waterfall uh, place. And actually, look at this. 
my friend Liam. Hey, Liam, he's enjoying up this beautiful place with his group, right? Costa Rica is a very small place, guys. And actually, you're going to find out this, that every in every place that we go to, we might be running with another fellow CEOs in their groups. And it's a perfect time, you know, to bundle with other people, to share experiences, you know, to just... You just share all the magic with the things that we are living and like right now as you see my friend Liam right there is also in our same place and also Jorge Jorgito Rasta is as well over there enjoying with his group this fantastic place. I made this a stop because a lot of things guys. The La Paz Waterfall Garden is a beautiful place surrounded in the cloud forest because we are going to be going from San Jose, getting into elevation around 1,600, 800 meters above sea level in that part of cloud forest. And we are going to be able to stop, get to fresh, you know, like you freshen up a little bit, enjoy of the pure air and see these beautiful waterfalls. They're actually a whole change of seven, eight waterfalls all the way up in the mountain. But for our purposes to enjoy, we're gonna be kind of doing this, what my friends are doing, to have a little moment. And also to give it a little try of fruits, guys. This is the perfect spot. Normally we have local vendors over there. They are gonna be having a beautiful display of different fruits of the season, right? So they're gonna be changing. Right now what I'm showing you here, this is manzana de agua manzana de agua so water apple as we will say water apple and this other fruit that we call guanabana tu, tu, du, du, du. guanabana tu, tu, du, tu. guanabana in spanish or we call it also sour sap these fruits are like a must you guys i recommend you especially the sour sap to have it in a juice it's absolutely delicious it's absolutely refreshing and tropical and probably your question it is adi what it tastes like. Well, guys, I'm gonna tell you that at this point, I cannot describe that flavor more than come over here and then we discuss it. Because definitely this is a very peculiar flavor, but something that I can tell you, it's named sour sauce. Sour for a reason. Definitely if we eat the fruit per se, we might gonna have one or two long, long faces because it is very, very sour. In difference to the water apple, that the water apple you, is, is the most interesting, you know, fruit for me, right? Because it's called an apple, but looks like a pear, and then it's rare. What is happening, right? <laughs> but this is crazy fun, and this is why I love our tropical fruits down here, because we have all these amazing experiences and very, very unexpected like this one. This, in this case, is very sweet. The consistency is kind of like a pear. I will say like a pear, a little tiny seed in the middle, but it can be very, very sweet, all right? So this is one of the things that I wanted to show you over here. But besides that, let's keep talking here, guys. We have in Costa Rica way more and more fruits, seasonal fruits, like these, guys. Have you seen these things before? Yay, how awesome, can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> well, some people call these lychees, we call it mamones, and the mamones are like absolutely delicious fruit. This is also a seasonal fruit that we have it two times a year in Costa Rica. We have productions of the lychees in, uh, in the south of Costa Rica, but as well we have it in, uh, in the north of Costa Rica. So we have two times over here. I'm trying to open this one so you show you inside over here. Let me show you guys. So the mamones, and my mouth melts again, again, guys, this is, we're talking about the things that I love, right? So we have the mamon over here. It's very easy to peel. You just can peel it with your hands. And you're going to notice something. What we're going to be eating over here of the mamones are going to be like the meat around, and we're not going to eat the fruit inside, the little fruit inside. It's something very delicious because this consistency-wise, it could be one of those things that you go, hmm, interesting right? But nothing like interesting, like the granadillas, for example, that are also in the passion fruit family. But I'm showing you here a little bit of a, a, of a picture of all the kind of fruits that we have here in Costa Rica, because it's not only bananas and it's not only mandarins. Yes, guys, this is a Costa Rican mandarin, and it's actually harvest from my sister's backyard. So this is absolutely amazing. It's super sweet. They are like the sweetest the most. I know that they look green outside, but they're kind of orangey inside. I almost pinched my eye with the zoom of this, but, <laughs> but it's delicious. And the smell, guys, I can tell you, is absolutely strong and one of those things. So 
again, guys, this is one of the things that I love to do to show you these experiences. And I'll take advantage absolutely of every single moment to show you fruits in the van, talking right now, any moment. In, if, we, if we're traveling and I see stands fruits on the side of the road, I'll just, just stop the van and we are gonna give it a try. Right there, what I'm showing is our, one of our Caribbean fruits. It's called Caimito. And I'm sorry, guys, I don't have the English version of Caimito. So we have to ask it Caimito like that. Amazing. Outside is purple, but look at inside. It's like a star and it's very, very sweet. It has like a kind of a sticky sap. So you normally have to open very wide and just to eat the white part because otherwise, you can, ah, now I understand why my mom gave me that so much when I was a kid. See, now it makes sense. <laughs> because it's just to stop your lips. <laughs> All right. So this is a little bit of the fruits of Costa Rica that we're going to be finding around. So, of course, I always encourage you guys that whenever you see fruits or anything, that, you know, attracts you, you see a fruit or a tree or whatever, and you are interested or you want to know more or give it a try, please let us know, right? We're going to be doing the impossible or impossible to just get you that experience on, right? So you guys are ready for the, our next stop? Let's go back to the band, yay! So our next stop is one beautiful place. Let me take you over there, all right? Oh, the mountains, guys, opa, opa, opa. <laughs> so here we are, guys. One of those places, they're really, really melts my heart in a very, very deep way. Uh, we are here now in the Cafecito Coffee Tour. This is a Planetera project. And does everybody know what a Planetera is? Well, let me explain you a little bit about it. Planetera is our nonprofit organization here at G Adventures that not only sponsors, but supports a lot of projects, local projects, not only Costa Rica, but worldwide. Proudly here in Costa Rica, we count with two projects and this is one of my favorites, to be honest with you, because this project, and basically, let me give you a little bit of backstory. The cafecito place or the coffee meal over there was not doing that okay. And with the push the Planetera through the adventures as well, give it, make an option to not only empower this company to and the benefits, right? Because they also are in the fur trade um, business. So this is also beautiful. Not only the coffee planters and the coffee pickers are gonna see the beneficial part of having the cafecito running back again, but the benefit of, of this is echoing along the town per se in Sarapiki where it's located. I can tell you this because most of the souvenirs that they are in the little store, in the little shop that they have over there are also made for women from the town. I actually have the opportunity to go and see one of those soups that they sell in the store. I went to the factory and all these ladies, you know, talking about the neighbor, did you hear, did you saw the neighbor, la la la. In the meantime, they're talking, they are working, working to satisfy the needs of this store. So see how beautiful it is and how amazing is the impact for us to come and jump into these kind of places and support, you know, with our visitation and with our support, we are definitely making a little bit of, uh, a little bit of granito de arena, as we said, a little bit of sun uh, grain over there in the good sand. So over here, my friend uh, Rastica, uh, he is right now showing us how to do cafe chorreal. And for some weird reason, guys, just to see this picture, I can smell the coffee. <laughs> so delicious. So cafe chorreal is the Costa Rican way to coffee. If you ever been here in Costa Rica, probably you're going to be like right now, like, yes, I know the experience, right? This is something beautiful and also very uh, emotional for me because I love it. This, this always reminds me uh, in my grandparents' house uh, because my granddad always used to say that he's, he, this used to be his alarm clock. Every time that my grandma made the coffee chorreal, that aroma spreads all over the house and he knew that was the time to wake up. So you immediately, you see him running, he's like, where's my cup of coffee? <laughs> right after he sends all that beautifulness around. So as you see, the chorreador is gonna be like a piece of wood where we are gonna be hanging the, um, the cloth back where we are gonna be putting the ground coffee over there, some boiled water, and we are gonna estimate. Normally, we recommend one, one teaspoon of coffee per one cup of coffee. That's how it normally goes. If you like it stronger, we'll add more coffee. If you like lighter, just keep it with one. It's, it just, it's, that's gonna be good. 
All right. So this is a beautiful place because guys in here in the coffee tour, we are going to be having an explanation, not only how to do coffee or try the coffee, but we're going to go through the machines and we're going to be able to understand how they work, how operate, how we got a cup of coffee. What is behind a cup of coffee that in my personal opinion, I always find that very, very interesting to understand beyond how I got this here, how I got to got this coffee, right? Because if, if we have the chance, I'm going to show you, uh, but when you try a coffee bean, it doesn't taste like coffee, right? So that's the magic, how that coffee bean goes from taste a little Swedish to taste like the beautiful coffee beater that we love and we adore over here, right? So this is something very beautiful, very educational. So we can also share with more local people and, and you know, and enjoy this activity. Now, not only coffee, guys. See, also mi cafecito, they have given a little bit, a little bit of steps over here. And they also are teaching us a little bit about el trapiche. El trapiche will be like the sugar meal. So in here, my little friend, she's squeezing out of the sugar cane juices, you know, to drink it. As you see, they are putting out on the pitcher. And normally what we do, it could be two ways. We just put some ice on it, na -na -na, enjoy that beautiful sweet flavor. Or if we want to just create, you know, some other kind of candies, or if we want to make the tapa de dulce, remember in the miel de ayote that we use it for the dessert, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take those juices and we're going to cook it for hours and hours until we create kind of molasses and then we put it out on a break. And that's how we're going to be having the tapa de dulce. So this is a whole experience that we can enjoy over here, not only learning about coffee, but also sugar cane and also about Costa Rica in general. And besides that, also we are gonna be learning about Sarapiqui, this town that stands in Costa Rica at least as a pioneer of sustainable tourism, right? As the way that they develop all their activities around, which is absolutely beautiful. And definitely we're gonna be having lots of fun in this place. But we're, well, remember we're heading to La Fortuna, guys. So we can stay too long over here in my cafecito. Once we have the tour and we already enjoy an amazing meal, and guess what we're having to eat over here, guys? Yes, I can hear it. Rice and beans. Exactly, guys, exactly. So after that delicious lunch that we're going to be having, let's go back to our van and we're going to be moving to La Fortuna. But hold on. Still, we have any questions? done an amazing job of um, informing all of us. I think a lot of people, everyone's mouth is watering right now with all of the co coffee and fruits and rice and beans that you have been showing. Um, so with nothing else, we'll uh, head on. Yes, that's awesome. All right. So vamos a la fortuna. Yay. Okay, so from here from, La, from Coffee Tour to reach La Fortuna is gonna take us like about an hour and a half, more or less. So we reach home, guys. Probably I'm able to tell you that I, I actually born in San Ramon, the city of the poetry. I'll tell you a poet later, but <laughs> that's where I born. But I did my childhood here in La Fortuna. So this is a very special place for me because coming to this place is like basically coming home and showing you like La Fortuna in different, different, very special way. So now, oh, look at this beautiful this place. I know like it gives me like this warm feeling in my heart just to see this beautiful picture so this is the volcano town guys i have a lot of friends that have expressed me this um way of la fortuna and i adore it because it's actually true some people said they la fortuna feels like a beach town without the beach um, right so it's something of that environs right that environs of peacefulness surrounded with nature that magic that energy right that brings out of the volcano probably or the lake but it's one of those places that we want to squeeze out of the time because we have lots of things to do we have a lot of activities that we can uh, do together and enjoy we can do it also by ourselves and so right but let's start with something uh, very important I normally like to recommend people in these little towns that we're gonna be 
to you're able to walk around, guys. La Fortuna is one of these places. There is very uh, organized in the squares. So it's very easy to walk around. You want to explore the town? Please do so, right? You can walk around and then you can say very easily, hey, where I am? Donde estoy? <laughs> and hey, people is going to be helping you in case you feel a little bit lost. But for sure, you're able to enjoy La Fortuna on your own pace if you want to explore the town. Also in every place that we are going to be going. Now, La Fortuna uh, has pretty much everything that we need, guys. There is post office, there is internet access, there are so many stores, there are gonna be restaurants, there are gonna be solitas, which actually we're gonna be talking about, but there are also gonna be lots of activities that we are gonna be talking. But now, let me walk you just around the park, basically, or next to the bus station. And here we're gonna be finding Sola La Hormiga. A highlight for me. This is place where you can find me most of the time if I'm in La Fortuna. La, La Fusolita, this La Hormiga, is a very special place because they definitely will have like more than 95% of rice and beans in their menu, but it's beautiful, the taste. This is also a family uh, business, which is something that I adore to support. And you're gonna see me like encourage you to go and to visit these kind of places. Besides casados, they also are gonna be having soups and they're gonna have plantains and they're gonna have yuca, cassava, and they're have, gonna have all these beautiful things that you guys might wanna try. You don't need reservation for these places. Well, also depends of the, of the time of the year you're gonna be coming. But if you come in a in like kind of a low season, you just can walk in into in through the solitas. My second recommendation is this Rainforest Cafe is only 70 meters from the Central Park of La Fortuna, but let me just make a highlight over here and or a declaration over here. It's called Rainforest Cafe, but it's not what you're thinking, guys. Take a look on the picture. There is no monkeys or leaves all over around. This is a local place. This is like one of those family business that I love to, to support as well, because they also have like kind of a bakery. They, you know, they bake their own desserts in the place. They have a menu with one whole page of only hot coffees, one full page of only you know cold coffees. So it's like a whole world to explore over there. They have fresh fruits and they have all these beautiful things that we can enjoy so my two recommendations for la fortuna to places to eat in this case will be uh, the rainforest cafe and soda la hormiga so you try some authenticity over here right but now let's talk a little bit of activities and jeff hey jeff jeff my co-worker here is enjoying a great time with doña mara and this is one of the activities that i really love to do guys this is a cooking class and look at that kitchen guys who don't want to be cooking on fire and taste some authentic real you know on fire you know homemade tortillas doña mara is like the sweetest person you can ever meet she always welcome people like you know, like family members, you're getting home. She, this is actually what she told me the last time that I saw her. She's like, you're getting to my house. How I'm not gonna treat you like family, right? And I was like, oh, this is the sweetest thing ever. And definitely she embraces you. She bring you to the kitchen. You do this, you do that. The only thing that she doesn't allow is for you to wash dishes, okay? So just so you to know. <laughs> Very important to know. She's like, don't do that. That's my job. So, <laughs> so here in Doña Mara, we can have one of those activities that instead of having dinner in town, we can come with her, have some, you know, tortilla class, get to have some coffee, you know, make some our rice and beans, get some chicken or vegetables as we prefer, and enjoy an amazing dinner inside of a Costa Rican house, which is one of what we'd want, right? We want to experience the real Costa Rica. So let's, you know, let's jump into Doña Mara's kitchen. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Here as well, guys, we have activities that we can do to Volcano, and I love this. Thank you, Florcita. Here's Flor as well um, in this. So La Fortuna and the Volcano that we just saw in a couple of pictures uh, ago, Yes, La Fortuna is beautiful and the volcano is amazing. But sometimes these things happen, guys. And I love when people get creative. Florcita was telling me that unfortunately, by the time that they were there, the volcano was completely covered the whole time. But the group decided to say, no, we want a volcano. And they did it. And I love it. <laughs> they did their own volcano and die right there. They're enjoying the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> but there are lots of activities that we can do as Florcita this day she took her group to walk around the volcano and experience that beautiful nature and wildlife that we can find around here because in La Fortuna is the place that you can unexpectedly get to see birds guys 
Let me know if you see a bird. Let me know. <laughs> I love birds, I told you guys. So those things are going to be also a highlight on my tours. I love to point them out at least. I'm a, I'm a terror. I'm just beginning. So I love to just keep learning about this. So let's keep talking about activities. See guys, we have lots of activities going on in here and this is why I want us to take advantage the maximum of our time because we also can enjoy it off the lake. And let's take a little moment to talk about this lake. Arena Lake is a man-made lake that it was built after, uh, five years after actually the inauguration, after the first explosion in, uh, of this Arena volcano uh, in 68. So this is an amazing, amazing, uh, picture over here because we get to see the whole thing but in this lake right now we are going to be able to do things like as you see kayaking we can do standard paddle we can do fishing also we're going to be coming here uh, the day that we are going to be traveling to Monteverde but I'll tell you more in a second so this is the kind of things that we're going to be able to do if we just want to swim we also can get swim uh, a little bit swimming over here in the lake because it's absolutely beautiful, especially like at, day, at days like this, right? Where you have this beautiful uh, scenario. But well, guys, the lake per se, uh, at the moment, like around the 70s, I would say and 80s, it was producing actually 60% of the electricity that we consume in Costa Rica. We actually reached a point that we were selling electricity also to Nicaragua. How fantastic is that? And remember, and keep in mind that, right? The Costa Rica is also one of those um, countries that stands out of sustainability and are proud of being green, as we said. Now, uh, last year, we actually completed our first year with, with renewable sources energy. How cool is that, right? So this is clean energy right here. So amazing, amazing, and just a little note over here so we can keep enjoying of our activities here in La Fortuna. Oh, look at that, that's Flor again. Hola, Flor! Flor just jumped out of a waterfall right there. So this is another of the activities that we are able to do. <laughs> Florcita is yelling out of happiness and she just did the canyoneering, the lost canyoneering. We can jump out of waterfalls, we can rappel down of waterfalls, guys. Those are the activities that we are able to do here in La Fortuna. If you just want something chill, let's walk around, let's take some bikes let's you know let's make some hikes let's explore the town but if you feel like getting the energy getting that adrenaline pump let's you know let's do ATVs let's do waterfall jumping let's do the gravity falls let's do a lot of things that we are able to do here in La Fortuna or some horse back riding but something that i like to do and that's jorgito as well we just run into him in the waterfall but he think he went he came first to the lake so he was doing some horseback riding but i always like to advise my uh, my friends something very important when we choose or when we talk about horseback riding horseback riding is one of those activities that i'm always asking you how do you feel how you feel doing horseback riding do you prefer to do the, your horseback riding around a volcano in the cloud forest at the beach how you feel like doing your horseback riding right so this is one of the activities that we can have done pretty much anywhere in uh in the in the tour in the trip that we're gonna be doing but besides that guys in here in la fortuna we are also able to do activities by ourselves just within walking distance from the downtown or the park where we are located right now we are able to walk within a kilometer make the calculations i don't know in feet so you, we can just walk one kilometer and we can go to el salto river el salto river is an open river it has a rope and we can just spend you know like a beautiful afternoon over there in el salto river enjoy that fresh water or if you decide we just can go and walk to the la fortuna waterfall and take a little bit of that beautiful nature that huge waterfall that we can actually swim at the bottom and having amazing pictures and memories over here but probably people is asking right now why she's talking about all these activities if we have a volcano and we can enjoy hot springs i know guys it's time to relax so we have a full day of activities we already did this we already went to the lake we're ready with with the horseback riding now let's soak in in the springs and let's just write you know our how do we call it our spa moment <laughs> our beautiful moment to chill and relax and get our energy back on. So here, right now, um, let me show you. 
this is el chojin, as we call it. Chojin is kind of a slimy word that it means it scratches skin. So that means that, you know, like sometimes people, as you see, there's rocks, people have to walk around. Who knows? You might be, you know, scratching a little bit if in case you fall. That's why I always recommend to people, if we are coming to El Chojin River, natural hot spring river, please always bring shoes, water shoes that you can walk into unless you said, you know, I'm an expert, Adi. I can walk on the rocks barefoot. So I'll be like proud of you. So <laughs> people sometimes do that. I actually do that. So, <laughs> so definitely, but if you don't, please bring the water shoes. Let's bring some snacks. Let's bring some drinks and let's enjoy our evening, our afternoon. Something that I always recommend to people, it's to come to the waterfall, sorry, to the springs, uh, normally in the afternoons. La Fortuna, it's about 300 meters above sea level. So it can be hot, it can be humid. And keep always that in mind, guys. Humidity in Costa Rica can go up to 90, 100%, right? So that's why we have shiny faces most of the time because humidity can be very, very high in Costa Rica. So this is why I always recommend you to please come to the springs quite of, uh, you know, like in the evening, after 4 p.m., something like that, right? So you can have a fresher weather outside so you can enjoy the most out of that beautiful hot water. And definitely, if this is a highlight, you see, hey, Grace, that's Grace right there at the bottom. Grace also took her group to the Hot Spring, uh, to the Hot Spring River, and this is what they did. They brought some volcanic mud, and look at that, you know, face of so happiness. That's amazing, Gracita. I love that. Definitely, I'm looking forward to my next day, you know, on that river. But definitely things that we can do. So remember, guys, I told you that we're going to be coming back to the lake for getting our transportation, but that's gonna be tomorrow and I'll show you how it's gonna happen, all right? But this is quite of a few of the uh, activities that we are gonna be able to do over here in La Fortuna. Is there any question about La Fortuna, guys? Yes, actually, we do have a question coming in from Carol. Uh, she's wondering um, how much free time we have at each location. Awesome, that's a great question. Well, uh, in case of La Fortuna, and basically in this tour, we are going to be having the afternoon-ish. We normally, you know, intend to get into the towns like something very close by the check-ins of the hotels. So something between 1, 2 p.m. So we have that afternoon, then one full day, and then we leave early on the following day. So we complete our two nights. So basically one afternoon and one full day. So, you know, so you can just measure your time. That's a great question. But for sure, this is a place that I normally would love to have more than three days, right? To complete all the activities that this beautiful place have to offer. Awesome. Any other questions? Uh, not right now. We'll continue on. Yay, let's go. All right, guys. So we have a traveling day coming up. And this is very important to highlight. Remember that we are going from 300 meters above sea level to 1,600 meters approximately. Uh, meters above sea level in Monteverde. So I'm gonna ask you something pretty please, and this is gonna pretty much remain from the rest of the tour. Always have with you a little day back with the following. Water, your camera handy, but your camera is always handy because remember, again, we never, never know when wildlife can show up, right? So whenever you show up, you just are ready to, you know, click over there and capture those beautiful moments. Then you're gonna be needing to have also sunscreen, right? That's very important. We wanna protect ourselves. And also you always wanna have with you a rain jacket. What? Sunscreen and a rain jacket? Yes, guys, that's right. Here in Costa Rica, we come with tons of meeker clients. So we drive an hour and we're gonna be in a completely different weather. And who knows, right? How the weather changes back and forth. Actually, we joke around with this and we said that our weather is like karate kid weather, you know, jacking on, jacket off, jacking on, jacket off. So that's how we play around in Costa Rica. Or we say normally too, that we have two seasons in Costa Rica. We have the rainy season and not that rainy season. <laughs> it's actually true, guys. <laughs> All right, guys, so if you are ready, let's go to Monteverde. Monteverde, Monteverde. Woohoo! Yay, welcome to Monteverde, guys. <laughs> How cool, right? So here in Monteverde, in the clouds, and already, I'm already like cold, right? <laughs> 
Monteverde is what it means to me, like our North Pole. <laughs> I'm overreacting over here. But definitely, temperatures can be very low. It can reach, you know, 15 Celsius, 14 Celsius, actually once over there. And I literally was walking around the town with a blanket around myself from the hotel, walking all over because I can't even talk. So Monteverde is very nice, very nice. Some people will say it's fresh, but well, right? I'm a Latina, so probably this is like the coldest place I've ever been. But here in the town, and as you get to see in, in here in the image, Monteverde is basically like a little triangle that you are seeing over here. And very easy to walk around, guys. So you wanna explore the town as well. For little that it seems, this beautiful town has pretty much everything what we need. They also come with laundry services, we have post office, we have restaurants, we have bars, ching ching. We have also solitas, we have souvenir shops, we have activities, we have a little bit of everything in this little piece of heaven, right? So we are gonna explore right now what we are able to do, but again, let me encourage you one more time to go and explore and walk a little bit by yourself so you can take, you know, your own pace and absorb in everything of this town. But well, look what we have in here. Florcita is the most adventurous of my coworker. She now is jumping into the zip line canopy tour. That's awesome, guys. And imagine this, this is the Superman line. I know some of you already felt the butterflies, right? So the Superman line is part of the activities that we do here with the zip line canopy tour. It's 11 platforms and we just have like basically two hours and a half of pure adrenaline, guys. I highly recommend this activity because of that, because there is no other moment that we can do. And I know you can tell me I've been zip lining here and there, but I can almost sense that you never zip line with the cloud forest at the bottom, right? And this is absolutely beautiful. At least for me, again, in a very personal note, when I am there in the cloud forest in the zip lining, it seems like broccoli, the trees, right? It's so delicious. <laughs> because everything is about food with me, guys. <laughs> so this is one of the beauty that we actually we want to do, the zip line canopy tour. Thank you, Florcita. And this could be at the daytime. Now, we also have activities at night, and this is where the highlight comes, guys. Our nocturnal walk gives us the opportunity to appreciate and see the forest in a different level, right? We're gonna be able to see different kinds of wildlife uh, they're only at night, right? Like this one that we're seeing right now. This kind of red-eyed frog is actually endemic of Monteverde. So how cool is this, guys? Do we have the opportunity to see species of birds or plants or amphibians or reptiles? They're only in one place in the world are able to see. How cool is that? We just can check things like that out of our bucket list with these beautiful night walks. They're also uh, set up over here in Monteverde. But now I told you that we are all about food, right? So let me talk to you very quickly about the two places that I recommend you over here. Um, I, can, I can tell you right now, this is my highlight here. <laughs> I, I, can, I actually can tell you what my highlights because I love food. So every place that I recommend you, they are my favorites. So, <laughs> so definitely this one I love. <laughs> Solita, Soda Las Tortillas, or Tortilla Solita, is this local diner that as well is family run, it's a family business, grandma run it with the son and, this, uh, and the daughter-in-law and the two grandkids. It's just adorable, guys. It's a little tiny place where they have beautiful kitchen, like seriously delicious. It's probably, and I was sitting around with my friends, but definitely is the best chicken wings I ever tried in my life. And if you don't believe me, I dare you to come and then we talk about it, guys, because definitely I, I can win this one. I can win this one <laughs> very easily. So Soda Las Tortillas is one of those places that you want to give it a little try once you are here in Monteverde. And then let me take you also to this Solita is like the kitchen of Doña Juanita. Doña Juanita is such a character, guys. And I... And again, and let me just explain you again, right? I, I love this, um, this kind of places because of that, guys, because we support and we are going to be um, making a little bit of, you know, of, of supporting these beautifulness ladies, right? That they have effort. Doña Juanita, in this case, she is a local from Monteverde. She used to work in different businesses, you know, in town until one time she decided to, and I loved it because this is actually how she told me. And then one day I said, I am done. I'm too old. I don't want to work. 
And then on the following morning, she said, I need to work. So, <laughs> so she decided to open her own business. The local municipality gave her this space right next to the soccer field uh, here in Monteverde. And she did this, guys, beautiful place. Like it feels, it gives me the sensation like getting into my grandparents' house. And it's that experience so much like a grandparent house that you get in there and you, you won't see a menu. You won't see a menu. You're going to see just Doña Juanita doing neither tortillas or cafe. And you have to ask, what is for today, Doña Juanita? ¿Qué tenemos hoy? Right? So what she cooked today? And she's going to tell you, rice and beans is a default, of course. There's going to be always rice and beans. But then she's going to tell you, options. oh, I did, keep, uh, you know, chicken for today. Or I have, you know, vegetables for today. And then you just join in. She serves you like literally like grandmother there, you know, like giving you food and treats you that special. And there you have only one uh, rate for that plate. And that's it, right? So this is very authentic, very delicious, very amazing. And this is how we can, you know, like just recover up from all the amazing experiences that we have last night with our, our night walk. And today while we were doing also um, the, uh, the uh, zip line canopy tour. Thank you, Doña Juanita. Hope to see you soon. My God, guys, take a look. Yes, guys, beautiful. You see that? <laughs> yes, bell bird, guys. That's the bell bird. And this is a beautiful species. And let's talk a little loud, you know, not that loud because it can go away. <laughs> okay, it went away. <laughs> So this bellbird is actually from the cloud forest, guys. And right now it's in, in, the, uh, in danger of extinction because of the reduction of the, uh, of the cloud forest. So this is actually why I have it over here because definitely is one of those birds that J adore. I love this bird for sure. <laughs> aye, 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 guys. How awesome is this, right? So over here, let me, oh, let me just show you a little bit more of the town. So here in Monteverde, this is like the downtown, as I was telling you guys. We can walk around, you know, very chill, very fresh, very nice. Uh, over here we have souvenirs and different uh, little stores, also cafes. There is an orchid cafe. Do you love flowers? Do you love orchids? Do you just want to chill and enjoy a coffee? There is an orchid cafe that you can go sit down, enjoy the flowers and something very chill. If you feel like this is too much energy and, and you know, I've got a lot of adrenaline, well, let's chill. Let's go for in the town. Let's get a coffee. You know, let's talk about what we feel like doing next. And so, right, remember, this is your tour, guys. This is your experience. And what I want you to go home is with that sweet, warm feeling that is, yes, I accomplished that, you know, vacation goals, that enjoying yourself. Not that feeling that I was like, oh, I did something I didn't like. No, in this case, I'm going to guarantee, and I'm pretty sure all my coworkers are going to guarantee that you're going to be having the time of your life, so for sure. But things that we can do here also in Monteverde, and I'm just this, I'm gonna do it like a little add on here. We can actually go and climb trees by ourselves, guys. This amazing ficus tree is right there in the town. We can just walk, you know, from downtown to this beautiful place and just climbing inside. Take a look, oh, how cool is that? I promise you get to see yourselves, right? Exploring this beautiful tree by yourselves is definitely one of those things that you're able to do. And something that I like also is that guys, do you guys have options? Options of, you know, like very uh, organized activities that we can help you through, but also you have options in case that you just wanna do things by yourselves and enjoy on your time. Look at this, guys. Another activity with my fellow friend. This is Estevitan. <laughs> Estevitan is showing us a great time in the hanging bridges. A beautiful activity and something that is a must, you guys. The hanging bridges give us the opportunity to sense the forest, the cloud forest, at daytime in different levels. So we can start right here in the base of the, of the forest. And as we move forward, we are going to cover in the, the forest like in the middle and then all the way to the top, do we reach a point that we're gonna be having all the forest on our feet? How beautiful is that? And you can see Estevitan and his people is enjoying a lot. And for sure we will, for sure, guys. Thank you, Estevitan. 
Also, another of the activities, if in case you guys want to have more adrenaline, Jeff is showing us a good time right here. Jeff is doing ATVs, and that's a very, very fun activity in case you just want to speed up on your vacations and, you know, like get some muddy and get some adrenaline going on. This is a perfect place to do so because definitely you're going to be working out those machines over there. I, Jeff, I wish I was there as well. <laughs> Oh, you guys, shh, take a look. Another bird. And what a bird. Guys, this is the most beautiful bird. This is the resplendent quetzal. The quetzal bird is actually considered the most beautiful bird in the world. And definitely we're here in the clouds for us to see it. If you want to come, guys, to get to see this bird, I recommend you to come between February and June. That's going to be kind of the nesting uh, time for this bird. And we are going to be having an opportunity neither in the cloud forest trails or in the hanging bridges to observe this bird. It's absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, and I'm talking this little so it doesn't go away, but it's eating aguacatillo, like wild avocado. That's what it fits in this time of the year when it comes to do so nesting. What a beautiful bird, right guys? Take a picture. <laughs> All right guys, but something else about this beautiful place over here, and I just want you to take a look very good of this picture. Tell me if you notice something far in the distance. Because Monteverde as well, it's an amazing place to enjoy. Like again, this is Jeff going into the ATVs, but he was telling me that this moment was very special and it's absolutely true because not all the time we're able to see the Arna Volcano. Can you see it? It's all the way here, all the way to the end. That's Arna Volcano. So from here, from the clouds, in a very amazing day, we will be able also to see the volcano. So you see, if we don't see it and we have to draw it in a picture, we might have the opportunity to see it from the cloud forest one more time, the volcano, before we continue. Activities are like lots to do over here, guys, in, uh, in Monteverde. And for sure, what we want, ay, Mané! Look at Mané! This is our, definitely our face after doing all the adrenaline <laughs> exercises and activities that we have. For sure, Mané is showing us a great moment here in the hanging bridge inside of the zip line canopy tour. Because I don't know if I told you, but the zip lining is not only about you throwing yourself on a cable. No, senor, no, senor. In this case, you're going to be doing all kinds of things. You're going to climb down off a tree. You're going to go in a hanging bridge. You're going to be throwing yourself, Tarzan swing. You're doing Superman, like all these. So that's what I'm telling you. This activity is definitely I highlight. Thank you, Mane, for showing us that great smile. <laughs> what a beautiful place is Monteverde, right, guys? And definitely, definitely a place that we want to explore. But before we move forward, I really want to know if there is any question about Monteverde. I'm not seeing any questions right now. I think people are past the point of visiting and everyone's starting to plan to move down there. So uh, <laughs> maybe we'll just continue on to the next place and give, give some people some options. Yay! <laughs> that is great, guys. Definitely welcome home. That would be awesome. <laughs> definitely, definitely. That would be a pleasure. Imagine how cool. And you already have a Costa Rican friend down here. So imagine, right? Why not? <laughs> All right, guys. So now we're going to be moving to a beautiful, beautiful place. And guess where are we going? Vamos a la playa. Oh, oh. Vamos a la playa, oh, oh, yes, guys, vamos a la playa. I already feel tan and everything, right? <laughs> so vamos a la playa, guys, it's our day to move to the beach, to the coast. So who's excited to go to the beach? Woohoo! Yeah, this traveling day, it's going to be probably our longest traveling day, guys. But again, I promise you that, you know, what, how we're going to be doing this is in a way that you guys can be stretching your legs and we're going to get in out of the van every two hours more or less, all right? So what I'm going to ask you for this day is to come basically on layers, all right? Remember, we're going to be moving again, a, a very important um, change of weather in this day because we're moving up from the mountains a thousand something meters above sea level to sea level. Right, so what we want, and if you don't mind, and if you don't mind to wear your swimsuits, bring your swimsuits on, why not? But if you do mind, just have them handy in your day bag. So once we get to the hotel, you're ready to change 
and let's go and enjoy the beach, right? So now we travel for about two hours. We stop a little bit, we stretch our legs. We have another coffee. We jump again in the car. We have another like an hour and a half drive. And now we're in this beautiful place, guys. This is another mandatory stop. This is Tarcoles River or the Crocodile River, as some people call it. This is a place that, you know, like it's just in the middle of the way. We are gonna be stopping our van for more stretching. If you guys wanna try some fruits, there are gonna be more fruits or smoothies. Coconut water, mmm, delicious. Because at this point, when we get to this bridge, it's gonna get hot outside, guys. Probably it's gonna be like around 30, 35, 36, you know, Celsius outside. So definitely it's gonna be one of those weathers that you wanna have something refreshing and nice. But in the meantime, we are like climatizing. We also are able to see these beautiful animals down there in the river. They actually permanently there. So we are gonna have like about 20, you know, 20, 25 minutes to walk into the bridge. Well, sorry, not into the bridge. Don't get me wrong. I don't want nobody swimming over there. We're gonna walk just on the bridge and get to see the crocodiles and get some pictures of this place and these beautiful animals that we are gonna be having the chance to see. All right, so, well, let's, let's do it like that, guys. <laughs> yeah, let's go with me, right? This is, <laughs> this is the picture. <laughs> This is the picture for the river. Sorry, I, th I thought I did it like that, but it didn't. So this is how the, uh, it looks like that. Last time that I was in this bridge, I actually count 14 crocodiles in just one side. How crazy it is. And something very, very uh, interesting. And you know, like people ask why they're there, right? Because this river is basically kind of like the perfect environment. They are gonna be having swampy water, running water that they can just, you know, go over here and just swim a couple kilometers down of the river. They are gonna be in the ocean. Remember the American crocodile is the one able to switch from fresh water to salt water. So it's very convenient. They, you know, they are done with the, you know, with the fresh water fish. Well, let's go now to the ocean and get something more exotic. Why not, right? So the crocodiles right there, they have also canyons, and you know, like on the walls of the river. So it's perfect for doing the holes when they have the mating time and the nesting time. So this is why we always take the opportunity to stop over here and get to see some crocodiles. All right? So, vámonos a la playa now, guys. Woohoo! Vamos a la playa. Oh, oh. I, I'm already there, guys. I'm already there. <laughs> I know everybody's feeling like, like already we got it over there. Oh, hold on, guys. So here we are in La Playa, Manuel Antonio. Woo! <laughs> Welcome to Manuel Antonio. <laughs> Welcome to Manuel Antonio and Quepos, guys. This is uh, the, the coast area. And let me explain you a couple things about Manuel Antonio and Quepos, which is basically the same town, just divided by a mountain. Quepos is basically like the local, uh, the local living town, right? Where the market is located at, where also they, uh, there is the uh, bus station, the post office, most of the major banks are also there in the town. So if you, we want to sense the, um, the beach area or this town, right, like in also the local side, we are able to do so in Quepos. And then we have Manuel Antonio, that he has the national park, the public beach, and two more beaches inside of this national park. Something very cool, guys, is that here in Quepos and Manuel Antonio, and no matter where we're staying, we also have the chance because there is a very, very great service of public buses coming back and forth from Quepos to Manuel Antonio. So it's basically every 15 minutes that comes and goes, starting at 5 in the morning and finishing at 10. PM. There is some regulation as after 6 p.m. if I'm not wrong that goes like pretty much in the hour but still it's an amazing service for the whole day to be coming back and forth you know from the beach to the town or in case you know that you need to move around. But let's just go to the beach guys. Mm, what about that right? If you like piña cola. I don't know. <laughs> See, I'm like, I feel like seeing and everything because I'm already there in the beach, guys. But this is the public beach. This is an area that we all, all also are, you know, able to do activities, but also relax and chill and enjoy ourselves. Uh, I always recommend and I always said to, to my friends that, you know, this is our last stop. This is the moment for us 
to go back home very, you know, like tan, <laughs> why not? Or if we feel like enjoying more of the wildlife, well, let's absorb in that part. Do you feel like resting, just chilling? Let's rent, you know, a chair and let's just remain the rest of the afternoon in the beach, enjoying ourselves. But here in this public beach, we are able to find different services. We not only can rent the beach, uh, sorry, the chair, the beach chairs that they have over there with the umbrellas and everything, but also we're going to be able to hire some activities. You want to do some parasailing? Well, you can do that. You want to do some horseback riding right there on the beach? We can help you with that. You want to go some surfing? Hi, I heard surfing around, guys. Well, here, this is also a great spot to do so. Are you feeling so professional? We will take you to a place where you can just show off, you know, those surfing skills. Do you feel like just beginning and starting? Well, definitely, we just can take you to a place where you're going to be feeling more comfortable learning about surfing and so. But definitely, this is a place where we can also do tons of activities that we can enjoy ourselves. Ah, look at this, guys. This is me enjoying of that parasailing day. Isn't it great, guys? <laughs> Up there, it was the funniest thing. I love this day because I actually could hear myself, like literally like that, just walking on the beach like, ah! Absolutely beautiful. So definitely an activity that I recommend you to do because it's absolutely fun just to get to see the national park basically from out there in the sky. Also one of the activities that I like to recommend you guys, let's take an ice cream, let's take a Churchill, let's take a cone, let's take something right, let's sit down on the beach, let's enjoy that beautiful sunset you know that we have uh, today. So these are the things that we're going to be able to do as well here at the beach but we feel like doing something more do we want to go and you know enjoy ourselves in more organized activities well look at this guys we can go doing some kayaking in the mangrove and as you know mangroves are gonna be a different habitat where we are gonna be able to find not only monkeys and so but we're gonna be able to find wildlife uh in water birds as well crabs snakes, who knows, right? Like anything the nation want to show off, we are going to be also able to find it in this uh, nice experience of like kayaking into the mangroves. Hi guys, I know you felt this picture already, right? And you feel like it's better to see the sunset from the ocean? We can do that, guys. There is an activity that goes on this boat. We can just take that catamaran boat, go out sailing outside of the ocean, and enjoy the sunset, some drinks, some dancing, some salsa dancing, because I can guarantee that at this point, we already know one or two steps, right? So we can just get in there, enjoy ourselves, get to have a beautiful meal. But look at this, guys. In this case, it will be... Try some means. I know you said it, guys. <laughs> so definitely, this is another of my recommendations of things that we can do because it's a very fun, fun activity just to go there. We can do also snorkeling in this uh, moment that we have. It's a little tiny snorkel, not like a, a whole uh, deep snorkel, but you know, something fun to get to see quite a few fishes uh, down there and get to enjoy the rest of the day. But as well, people is wondering, what about the national park? Thank you, Esteban. Right there is Tevitan in his group. is in joint of the National Park, Manuel Antonio. And actually where they are right now, this Manuel Antonio National Park is, um, is where, where the sea sign is, is where the beach, the most beautiful beach of this park it is located. It's a, like a little tiny bay. It's not that wavy. It's considered actually one of the most beautiful beaches of the country because of that. And you're able to enjoy yourself and, um, and just walk around. The National Park per se, guys, is a very, very friendly user. You can neither do it with a guide or by yourself if you prefer. It has different trails that you can take them all and enjoy in different levels. Some of them are very easy to walk around. Some of them are gonna re you know, require a little bit more of challenging, probably closed shoes and so. Probably for the others, you can go good with flip-flops, but the National Park is a must-do. And if you are into the definitely hiking and walking around and explore the national park, I recommend you a couple of things. Please take your bag, get some snacks, but with the snacks, guys, let me just make a clarification. And proudly Costa Rica is taking very good in consideration our life in these uh, matters. 
So we are not allowing into the national park to bring Doritos food and, you know, like food uh, in packages, you know, because unfortunately, and for some amazing miracle, monkeys actually recognize when you bring these kind of packages. And then you see yourself running behind the monkey, you know, fighting for your food. <laughs> So now, right now, the regulations are asking us to bring peeled fruits. Yes, you can bring your water, but already prepare. If you have a sandwich, you can bring your sandwich and things that you're going to consume right away. And you're not going to leave like a lot of trains, per se, that way, if I'm making myself clear. But the Parque National, the National Park of Manuel Antonio, it's something that definitely we want to stop and we want to take our time to enjoy it for sure. Now, guys. I haven't talked to you about food in here, right? That's weird. Even for me, I know. I was like, when are we going to talk about food? But here in Manuel Antonio is one of those places that I was telling you, I like to embrace our cuisine along the tour. But now here we are on the coast. And in Manuel Antonio is a place that you are finding spots like this. This right here is Ronnie's place. I love this place uh, because they have beautiful views, beautiful kitchen, and we can enjoy more of the seafood uh, meals per se, right? We're on the coast, why not? We already probably already eat enough rice and beans along our tour, right? So we're able here to explore a little bit more of that cuisine and we are gonna have a little bit more, more open options. So here, I normally make you recommendations with places with great cuisines in great views like this ones and also great cocktails <laughs> all right so this is a uh, beautiful over here in uh, manuel antonio where we can do all these beautiful things and right here also guys just to you to know inside of the national park there is one trail called catedral and the catedral and at this time let me see just like around this time of the year we, if you walk into the Catedral all the way to the highest point, you're gonna be overlooking the ocean. And if you come at this time of the year, you might, you might get to see a whale tail. This is the humpback whale uh, time when they come around here. So it's a spectacular, just, you know, just seeing yourself there surrounded by nature, monkeys and all this beautifulness and bam, right there, a tail of a whale who says that, right? So, but that's gonna be in different times of the year. So that's why you might wanna consult first. So you are gonna be accomplishing those goals uh, once you are over here. But guys, let me ask you something. You have any questions? Uh, wondering what time of year would be the best to visit? Oh, great question. Well, that's a great, great, great question for sure. For this tour, as we are covering more the Pacific side, I do recommend you to come something between December, January, February, March, April, you know, those months, that's going to be considered our summertime, right? Because after that, if you feel like you want to come and explore also our Caribbean side, so in that case, I recommend you for the Caribbean side to come like around this time of the year, September, October, those are going to be the best months for the Caribbean side. But for this tour specifically, you want to have sunshine, you want to have like a beautiful weather, Weather. So between December and April, that will be the best time. Perfect. Yeah. Any other question, guys? Um, I think we have a few coming through, but we uh, can probably answer those in the chat. So we can maybe just continue on. For sure, guys. But we'll let's let's do something over here, guys. Well, because this is our last day and we are have to go back to San Jose, right? But guess what? It's going to be three hours going back to San Jose, but for sure, we are going to be going all the way, enjoying ourselves, just recapturing what we experienced, talking about what we did, uh, just bounding a little bit more, right, within our, our fellow travelers and just summarizing all the experiences that we have. And definitely for me, it's been a pleasure to show you Costa Rica and, you know, like give you a little bit of uh, you know of, of, of information of where I live where I, where I have the pleasure to call home and right here well I just say goodbye with our most beautiful sign this is our Costa Rican seal because probably and, and I love this because it's a great representation and let me just take a little moment over here to explain about that our Costa Rican seal representates the seven provinces as it is divided the country let me show you the country again <laughs> 
<laughs> so you see the uh, seven stars over there that does the seven stars for the seven provinces that are divided in the country. The mountains or the volcanoes that you see over there represents all the uh, mountain ranges that we have along the country as well. Two oceans, Caribbean and Pacific, and well, the two uh, ships over there, the boats over there, they remind us uh, 1500s when Columbus arrived around here in the Caribbean side. So this is Costa Rica, guys. This is our Pura Vida life. And thank you so much for taking your time to share with me a little bit of home. And I definitely can't wait to have you here back in Costa Rica and share with you all these experiences life, of course. Thank you, Audrey, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time to connect with us to join G Adventures for a live virtual group tour. Uh, I know Audrey gave us the taste of wanderlust that we need during this time, and we'll all be looking to book those first flights out to Costa Rica once we can. Uh, but for now, we will stay home and stay connected. Um, I've just shared in the chat box, but if you enjoyed your adventure with Audrey, you can show your appreciation by tipping her here through PayPal. 100% uh, of the money does go to Audrey to help support her until she's able to get back to doing what she does best, sharing our world in real life. Um, but until then, uh, everyone, thank you one more time and stay safe, stay connected, and we'll talk soon. Pura vida! Yoo-hoo! Give me some of your rice and beans. <laughs>